Hi, everyone. It's me again. And Squish Gang is on an unmade bed because I still have to wash the sheets. And today we're going to talk about the trans creator Kelly Cadigan and her recent TikToks about leaving the right. And in that, we'll discuss kind of the nature of creators like Kelly being on the right and sort of the debate about forgiveness and the narrative that is present for that. But first, links to social media, sources, ways to support the channel, including an Amazon wish list, Patreon, YouTube memberships, all that kind of stuff, as well as affiliate links to the makeup I'm wearing, Gerard Cosmetics, and Every Jewels, all linked down below. I also want to take this time to thank my patrons and my YouTube members. Oh my God, I'm always saying. So thank y'all so much for being so kind and lovely. And when you're watching this, there will be another audio only little clip where I talk for like 10 minutes over some sad cat pictures up on Patreon and YouTube members. Also, I want to let you know that there is a Colleen Ballinger video on the way. I just want to get the timeline right and kind of see how everything transpires before I put out my video on that. So that's why it's not here yet. Parts of the video, three parts. Part one, Kelly's journey to the right. Part two, Kelly taking back the journey to the right. And part three, moving on and the right wing grift. Let's get into part one. So Kelly Cadigan is a trans woman who is kind of makes TikToks and became infamous for these sort of, kind of this sort of parody of Dylan Mulvaney's day whatever it is of girlhood where Kelly was doing day one day two day three what have you of being on the right because the left was so full of crazies or whatever so here's the thing it is currently Sunday June 11th 4 24 p.m. nothing is here her TikTok is cleaned from before the first day one of being the right everything from that point to now is gone which is around March of this year so I'm looking at re-uploads and I'm putting some pieces together when we're having this conversation. So I noticed when I was looking at the TikTok, at Kelly's TikTok, there was some from 2022 that were beginning to kind of hint at this shift in opinions that Kelly was having and kind of what led to this thought process that led her to the right in the first place. So I'll put that in right now. Now, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not woke. Okay, fine. You win with your gay stuff. That's what you want, right? To win. Kelly has seemed to fall victim to almost a sort of discourse that has some similarities, in my opinion, to like turf discourse, where while turfs are like trans women are not real women, Kelly's idea is if you're not passing, you're not a real woman, right? So if you're trans, but you're not putting in the willingness to pass, or you have this sort of androgyny to yourself, maybe you don't want surgeries and those kinds of things, you're kind of not putting in the work to pass. Thus, you're not like putting in the work to be a woman, right? That's kind of Kelly's take on all of this. I think what was happening was there was a lot of backlash within her comments and the trans community on this view. And in order to, as opposed to challenging her own viewpoints and challenging her, perhaps the perception that she's gained through society and this sort of need to pass because a lot of the videos she, was, she had from that time uh, this being 2022, were kind of revolved around needing to pass. And I think that became a sort of fixation for her as opposed to challenging these viewpoints of like, well, why do I think this? Why do I think womanhood has to fit in this like specific box? Why do I think that this is necessary? As opposed to challenging that, she what she's doing instead is she wanted to find like-minded people in this way so what she did was she sought out those figures on the right that are like would show kind of these pictures of you know a man in a wig and being like is this the person you want in your bathroom is this the person you want competing in sports with you and it's kind of being validated in this concept of like oh no like a lot of these people that are pretending to be trans which are they're not pretending to be trans are just like guys in wigs trying to infiltrate uh, and prey on people or something, kind of to validate that she didn't put in the effort to not be clocked, as she says, or to to pass, as opposed to like it seems sort of frivolous. So to kind of elaborate on that in people words, it's I think it's because getting the surgeries is hard. 
putting in the work to, you know, uh, she had, she says she's done laser, like hair removal stuff. There's the voice training that you have to do when you are male to female because estrogen is not as powerful in kind of changing like your vocals and stuff as testosterone is. I just want to make it abundantly clear that I am aware that the things I am saying are superficial. And I'm saying like the voice, like I said, oh, you have to do the voice uh, training, etc. I mean to fit the superficial mold that I think Kelly has fallen victim to. I want to make it very clear that I'm not saying that those things make you a woman or not. Because these sort of conventions of what is called passing even depend deeply on what society they come from, what views are reflected in that society, how their personal views align. So it's like not what I'm trying to put forward here. I just want to make that incredibly clear because I think these nuanced conversations become more and more vital as trans lives become endangered through like legislation and things like that. So just want to say that. Thank you for watching. Then there was also obviously like the clothing and, you know, the de she kind of seems to try to alter her demeanor a little bit, makeup, lashes, all that kind of stuff, nails, those types of things, right? And what's happened now is there are people that don't bother with a lot of that stuff that are still claiming to be women, uh, claiming to be trans women, claiming to be whatever. And, you know, rightfully so, they're allowed to. And I think... If that is the case, then Kelly kind of maybe feels like she did that for nothing. This is kind of the line of reasoning I've noticed throughout her videos when forming the timeline of what led her to the right. And with people like Blair White being on the right, that has allowed for Kelly to see that someone who is able to pass being one of the figures for them, feeling that she might be able to do so. And this kind of leads into this idea of wanting those who don't like her to not only agree with her, but to believe her in her kind of trans identity. And this leads us into part two, which is Kelly taking it back. Now, these videos were deleted upon me looking at her TikTok, but luckily I'd actually saved them a couple of weeks ago. So I believe I still have them. So I'll put them in now. You know, you don't have to accept me back. You can think I'm manipulative, but I'm going to tell you guys some things I learned while being on the right, just so um, everyone can learn from my mistakes. Um, the right doesn't ever believe that I can be a woman of any kind, not even just a woman that isn't a biological woman. No, they want you to be called a male, specifically a trans identified male. Um, the right does not believe that if you as a trans person adopt a child one day, if you're a trans man, you can't celebrate Father's Day. If you're a trans woman, you can't celebrate Mother's Day. They, they told me that I am not allowed to celebrate Mother's Day, that that in and of itself would be offensive to women. They told me that even as a post-op trans woman, not that it should matter either way, I should be forced to use the men's bathroom. There's no, there's no middle ground with the people on the right. They genuinely just want you to say you're a male that's feminine. That, and that takes female hormones. That's what they want you to say. And they just, they're so dense that they can't see the bigger picture of what a trans identity actually is. Like most of us are aware of what we are biologically, but it's deeper than that. And that's what they don't get. I was at a point where I would watch so many stitches of my videos and I would want to react with anger, <laughs> but I, 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 I'm not going to react with anger because I've done too much damage to the community to be upset about that. People have a right to be upset with me. People have a right to not ever want to accept me back into the community. I understand that I've done and said some horrible things. I don't want to come on here and cry. Like, I want to be just real. I'm sorry to Dylan Mulvaney for taking your days of girlhood stick and using it for my own conservative grift. Um, I'm sorry to the black community for what I said about slavery. I, I shouldn't have said that. Um, and to non-binary people, I'm sorry I said your identities aren't valid, but I'm also not going to sit here and say I understand. I need, I need to talk to more non-binary people to have a better understanding of your identity and what it means because I truly still don't understand. But I'm willing to hear you guys out and have a conversation about it now. I feel foolish for not including in this video the slavery aspect of this where kelly's comments about slavery essentially summarized kind of just saying it was a choice a la kanye west 2018 um this video focuses specifically on the shift 
of trans identity to like uh, hating on trans identity to the right wing grift, which is like the current rising pipeline as opposed to racism, which is the constantly resubstantiated longstanding pipeline. So I just wanted to say that I was kind of focusing on that. That's why I didn't mention it. I want to say, so when I said, I think I say later, I say like, it's not my apology to accept regardless uh, regarding the trans community. However, I will extend that also obviously to people of color, to black people specifically, but also because a lot of these narratives that come from being racist in that way lead to a general hatred of people of color as well. Um, but yeah, I wanted to say that I extend that. I'm not able to accept it to that point as well. And just wanted to make that clear. And again, because I am horrible with my time, I don't have time to refilm. So that's why this video has voiceovers inserted. That is all. Thank you. So as you can see, these videos are Kelly challenging herself in how she felt about being on the right with her biggest issue being that no matter what, no matter how hard she did, she tried to pass, no matter how hard she tried to kind of conform to their ideologies, how much she denounced leftist ideologies, that they still believed that she was a man. And if you go back, as I mentioned before, and I'll put another one in in a second, um, to 2022, you could see that a big part of this conflict that she had with herself was because people were like, you're still a man, you're still ugly, and a man, et cetera, et cetera. And she would often just stitch those videos being like, I am so hot, I cannot be clocked, yada, 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 and would use that as a validation of her womanhood. So I think a lot of the issue that led her to the right in the first place was this sort of perhaps maybe insecurity in what womanhood is, which is often perpetuated by people on the right, hence Matt Gates having quite literally a whole ass movie on what it means to be a woman perpetuated through this very stereotypical and small box. And I think that had led Kelly to thinking that. So Kelly says that she kind of wanted people who disagree with her, don't like her, to like her. This, I find, is something that a lot of people have a hard time with. A lot of social media kind of, I don't want to say performers, but um, creators have this sort of issue. And a lot of people actually end up quitting because of backlash because they have trouble with the idea that not everybody is going to like them. Not everybody is going to agree with them. Not everybody is going to see that they are worthy of the messages they deliver. So Kelly is now in a position where she feels the need to kind of walk it back. And it seems to have walked it back to a sort of centrist ideology, which is fine. Uh, you know, as far as like, I'm saying it's fine to admit that you're walking it back. The messages she was sharing, the dialogue that she was having, the conversations that she was having were just all right. Reactionary propaganda. I don't know where I am politically anymore. I feel like I've mentally been so drained by the right. And it's just so funny to me because I felt like I was so drained from the left, which is what made me go to the right. But honestly, you guys, my opinions have not changed. I mean, I'm open constantly. I feel like people are constantly evolving and we're constantly having new experiences that allow our opinions to change on things. So I'm not saying I couldn't adjust how I feel about certain topics in the future, but I can't. I can't align with a party that's telling me in the future I can't celebrate Mother's Day. I can't align with a party that's telling me I'm going to have to explain to my adopted child one day the topic of transgenderism. I don't want to do that. I want my kid to grow up not even knowing about what transgenderism even is. I can't support a party that's telling me I'm not allowed to use the women's bathroom, especially as a post-op trans woman. And that is not me saying you have to be post-op to use the bathroom. But I'm just saying, especially as a post-op trans woman... I feel like it's really weird to be forcing someone like me to use the men's bathroom. So when I see, and I understand not everyone on the right feels that way, but when I'm seeing replies on Twitter telling me I should use the men's room and those replies have like 30, 40 likes on it, what is that supposed to tell me? What am I supposed to take from that? Because that's telling me at least a strong portion of this party wants my life to be at risk because I'm sorry, me walking into the men's bathroom is going to cause way more issues than it would solve.
And lastly, and probably the most important point, I can't support a party who's gonna call my gender reassignment surgery an open wound. I, I'm sorry, even if that's scientifically what it is, I, when I'm going out of my way to call you guys biological men and women and not use the term cis, the, the fact that you not only cannot call me a trans woman, you wanna call me a trans identifying male, a Tim, but, but you also won't even give me the respect of saying I have a canal. No, you have to go out of your way to call it an open wound and make fun of me for having to dilate. That, that, that is just such a mean, bully-like mentality. And that's just not my vibe. I'm just not here to support stuff like that. I feel really lost right now. And I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know. And I, we're really damaging to the trans community, especially in a point now where people are so especially in the united states they're so contentious around trans identity trans safety procedures all that kind of stuff so this moves us in to part three moving on and the right wing grift so people have started having conversations on twitter uh vosh made a video is the only one i think i've seen come up so far for me and it's this conversation of around when forgiveness is allowed when is forgiveness allowed? Could you just walk back everything you did when you did months of essentially spewing um, rhetoric that could lead to just severe consequences for the trans community? And to that, well, I obviously can start with that it's not my apology to accept if it even was one. It's not for me to say it could be walked back and it's not for me to make that assertion. What I can say instead is perhaps reflect on the society around this concept of acceptance on the various kind of places in the political spectrum. And I think with that, you have people like Kelly who are feeling rejected by the left. And even though a lot of their ideologies realistically lean further in that direction, they don't feel welcome to it because of this constant fear of making mistakes, especially when in the US political climate, the right wing are so quick to accept people in some form, as long as you follow, you know, the few, for lack of a better term, bullet points that they have, or if you do not, you represent the marginalized party and can speak on the benefit of the right if we're talking about people like Candace Owens and then you've got Blair White who is trans right so those are a couple of your figurehead types that while they don't necessarily fit the boxes of you know white powerful wealthy uh, Christian conservative types they fit for some other purpose so if you don't match one of those two camps then you're kind of screwed, but it's pretty easy to get into them if you could fit into those types of things. While on the left, it's often this strong sort of fear that's mongered throughout the community, right? It is very rare that I've noticed that you hear people say they're not a real conservative. They might say they don't really believe what they're saying when they're talking about extremist things, but people don't run around being like, in my comments, let's say, being like, Ben Shapiro is not a real conservative. But I've heard in my comments, Bosch isn't a leftist, Hassan's not a leftist, all these different um, political streamer characters. I had more in my brain, but they have just, well, even we're talking about the Illuminati, if we're talking about Illuminati situation, it's like, oh, why was she uh, talking about left politics when she was a landlord, which I agree, like that is strongly contradictory. But I'm just playing these examples to kind of highlight that narrative that, <sighs> people will run around and say, no, you're not left wing on, on behalf of other people. And personally, I don't really respect those comments when it comes to me, when people try to say that to me, because I have, and this is something that Kelly said in one of her videos too, was like, I know what I believe in, right? I personally do know what I believe in and I know where my politics lie. So if someone says, oh, you're X, Y, Z, and it's not true, well then it's whatever. I'm not a political commentator by nature, nor do I want to be a debate bro. Uh, if I had to debate someone, I'd rather put my head against a cheese grater. But with that being said, I can still take a sort of sympathetic side to that sort of fear that exhibits within people and why they want to lean to the right. Now, obviously, there comes issues with both Kelly and other people all the people that have made the leaving the left video, people like shoe on head, people like 
uh, YDHB slash Young, uh, the unpopular opinion with Sarah, Young Dumb Honey Bun, whatever her name is. There's like those types of people that just leave the left due to this sort of feeling of not being able to have their opinions challenged, not wanting criticism and seeing how the right sees their value in numbers and thinking that that might be a good idea to pursue. But I think having that option in place is what makes the left weaker by the day. And I think Kelly's falling into the right, calling the left a cult and kind of reacting in the way that she did while very extreme can sometimes imply where the social kind of political spectrum lies and how people feel about their politics and how they feel their politics represents them. And I think that is something to challenge. So that's why I think take into account every possible avenue when deciding if Kelly could or should be forgiven and what steps would be made for Kelly Cadigan to be able to post online freely again, to be able to maybe have a fitting opinion, be able to maybe be reprimanded, maybe be able to reconcile. It depends, right? But there is a lot of, dra of trauma with being a trans youth for transitioning and in in the environment that she was transitioning in as young as she was and having the political side coming in on it too when she decided to move to the right. So that's all I have to say on that. I think today, just a really short kind of chit chat type beat video and yeah, links, sources, ways to support the channel, all that kind of stuff. I'll link down below, including an email to suggest longer form content. And I hope to see you around soon. Colleen video coming up eventually. Have an amazing day or night or whatever time it is. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye. A white dude and people get mad and like they're sensitive, whatever. This movie had like three white people, dude. Like, like it's actually crazy. Like. Can we not do anything more anymore without female criti criticization? I'm sick of this. Everything, everything us men do, we have a woman come on here and they criticize us. We can't do anything anymore. We're, 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 we're in prison.